Hi, my name is Rodolfo Pericinotto. I'm a PhD student in mechanical engineering at the University of Campinas in Brazil. This is my presentation, Particle Image Velocimetry in a Centrifugal Pump, Details of the Fluid Flow at Different Operation Conditions. The main motivation for this study is the Electrical Submersible Pump, or ESP, which is used as an artificial lift method in the oil and gas industry. The ESP is composed of rotating impellers, in which turbulence and shear are very intense. In presence of oil and water, emulsions are formed inside the pump, and they lead the pump to operate uh, with a lower performance and also in an unstable way. In this contest, we use flow visualization methods as the PIV to bring new information and insights about the flow inside the pump. The particle image velocimetry, for example, is a flow visualization method which uses a laser generator to illuminate the flow and a camera to capture images of this flow. The flow is full of tracer particles, which are very small solid particles. And these particles receive the light from the laser and then reflect it to the camera sensor. So, when the computer compares the images, these particles are detected and their displacement and velocity can be calculated. The particle image velocimetry and other flow visualization methods as well <coughs> can be used for a measurement of quantities related to turbulence, energy dissipation, drop dynamics, and also the slip between phases. So, we started our experiments by developing a transparent centrifugal pump for visualization purposes. This is the drawing of our new pump, and this is a photograph of the visualization section. So, the transparent pump is mounted in an experimental facility assembled at Sepetro Unicamp. As you can see, this facility also has a laser generator and a camera which compose the PIV system used in the experiments. This is an example of a PIV experiment. As you can see, the pump is illuminated from both sides by uh, the laser. Okay. Then images are captured as this example here on the left. In this raw image, the little white dots are basically the particles reflecting the light from the laser to the camera sensor. When we capture some raw images as this one here, we need to apply a processing procedure, which uh, is basically composed of filters, masks, the cross correlation, and also interpolation. The objective here is to convert raw images as this one here into processed images as this one on the right. This example of processed image is actually a velocity field where we can see the velocity vectors. In this case, the velocity is this one here. This is the absolute velocity of the velocity triangle for turbo machines. But we can also add another step to our processing procedure, in this case, the rotation removal. And then we obtain this <coughs> example <coughs> of a, a velocity field. In this case, we have this velocity here, which is the relative component of the velocity triangle. This is the first example of a result. We are now looking at the average relative velocity fields at 600 revolutions per minute. We start by looking at the shutoff point, which is basically a very low water flow rate, below 10% of the best efficiency point, 
And in this case, we can see that all the channels have very complex flow structure. There are partially blocked channels, especially here on the left, full of vortices, jets and regions of recirculation and reverse flow. When we increase the water flow rate and reach the best efficiency point, as in this point here, in the head curve, we can see that the flow becomes very well organized. Now the streamlines are more aligned with the blade curvature. So the pump is uh, more well behaved in this case, and the flow is uh, more uniform. Then we reach the open flow condition, basically 160% of the flow rate corresponding to the BEP. We are now here in our head curve, and we can see that the flow structure becomes a little more uh, complex again. The streamlines are, are now deviated toward the suction surface of the blades, and they have a longer path. There is a clear relationship between pump performance and flow behavior. For example, the flow topology is similar for two similar psi phi points, where psi is the head coefficient and phi is the flow coefficient, I mean dimensionless coefficients, okay? So, in this case, for example, if we take these two points here, they have this almost the same head coefficient and flow coefficient, but they have different rotational speeds and different flow rates, which would be 100% of the BP for each case. Even for different rotational speeds and for different flow rates, which correspond to the best efficiency point for each condition, these two points here will be very similar, will be almost the same regarding the flow structure inside the impeller, because they have the same or almost the same psi phi points in this chart here. This is another example of result that can be extracted from PIV measurements, which is the turbulence in the ESP. In this case, we are looking at the turbulent kinetic energy. And as we can see, the turbulence is very different depending on the operating condition. It's interesting to observe that the turbulence levels inside the impeller are different depending on the operating condition. For example, at the best efficiency point, the turbulent kinetic energy is the lowest as possible, as you can see on this chart. However, when the pump operates away from the design point, uh, at a lower or a higher water flow rate, we can see that the turbulent kinetic energy increases to numbers that are three and a half to four times greater than the turbulence found at the BP for example. This turbulence is related to the energy losses found in the pump. These results can characterize the formation of emulsions in the pump. Now we have the velocity fields for the continuous phase, but when we inject a second phase, a dispersed phase, in our pump, we can see that there is an interaction between the phases. So, the dispersed phase behavior will be dependent on the continuous phase behavior. As you can see, in this case we have white oil drops dispersed in water for different water flow rates next to the shutoff, the best efficiency point and the open flow condition. We can see that the behavior of these dispersed drops is very dependent on the operating condition of the pump. And this is 
partially related to the behavior of the continuous phase. In other words, um, the velocity fields for the continuous phase, represented here in yellow, the yellow vectors, uh, would be responsible for how the dispersed phase is moving and how the dispersed phase is breaking up. And finally, how the emulsion is being formed inside the pump. Another application of the PIV data is to estimate the energy losses in the impeller, specifically in a single impeller channel. We can use the PIV data to measure or to calculate an average wall shear stress and a friction factor. We start with the linear momentum equation, where we have the moment flux, pressure, shear, and forces due to the rotation motion of the impeller. With the velocity fields obtained from PIV data, we can calculate the wall shear stress, represented here by this expression. The expression is implemented and solved for different conditions, where we use different surface controls and volume controls. As we can see, we are able to obtain the wall shear stress measured in pascals for different rotational speeds and also uh, flow rates in the pump. Finally, from the wall shear stress, we can calculate the Darcy friction factor. In this specific case, we are computing the average velocity from PIV data as the average of the magnitudes of the velocity vectors present inside the whole control volume. And then the result is here. We have a friction factor for our impeller channel as a function of the flow coefficient. But we can also estimate the average velocity for a pipe considered equivalent to the impeller channel with a cross-section area calculated via hydraulic diameter. So we firstly fix an average impeller radius, then we calculate the diameter equivalent uh, so we can convert the impeller channel into a pipeline. And finally, we calculate the Reynolds number for this uh, equivalent pipe. In this case, we obtain the friction factor as a function of the Reynolds number, as if, uh, as in the case of the Moody chart or the Moody diagram. And this is another result that we can uh, finally obtain from the PIV data. So this research has experiments to better understand single phase water flow concluded, two phase oil water emulsion ongoing, and single phase mineral oil flow planned for the next months. The idea is to use the data from flow visualization methods to model or uh, to better um, calculate energy losses slip or drift, and also drop dynamics inside the impeller. I'd like to thank you all for listening to me. Thank you all very much. And uh, I'll be glad to answer questions in the comments below. Bye.